Hey, ninth grade. So I know it probably looks like you have a lot of work to do today, but the poems that you are reading and the stuff that you're working with is actually incredibly short. And before I jump into anything, I just want to give a little more background on why we're reading poetry and why we're studying it. Because number one, poems are very short. Um, it's not like you're reading a longer short story or a longer Shakespearean play or a longer novel um, or chapters from a novel. They're not really extensive. Um, some poems can be really long and Jabberwocky was a bit of a longer poem, but there's poems out there that can go on forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, but these poems in particular are very short. The first one that you're going to read by Carl Sandburg, who some of you may recognize as a famous children's author, um, wrote a little poem called Fog, and it's two sentences long. The other poems that you'll be reading by Robert Frost, on which you need to watch the video on him before you read those poems, um, just to give you some more context, they're also very short as well. But the thing about poetry is once you read it, um, poetry is supposed to have this effect on you where it like causes you to think a little bit deeper about something, because most of the time, poems are written in a way to have a certain effect on the reader or the person that hears the poem or so on and so forth. But the other interesting thing about these poems is that once you're reading through them and starting to look at them and analyze them and try to figure out, well, what is this actually saying? Because poems, again, as I said, with their form and their construction, they say a lot without saying that much, which is pretty cool. And these poems definitely do that as well, because like I said, Fog is two sentences and the other two poems you're reading today, Nothing Gold Can Stay and Fire and Ice, they're like this long. And they're, they're not that hard to understand. The ideas in them may be, um, if you start to really think on them, you may be like, oh, that's really deep, because that's what I want you to get from them, is that they are really deep poems. And so really what you're going to do is you're just going to read through the poems, and all the questions um, really just ask you to respond to them. And like, do you agree with what this is saying? Um, or do you disagree with what this is saying? Or like, what was your experience through reading these poems? And that's really all you have to do. Um, I will say that for the fire and ice and nothing gold can stay, I want you guys to try something with those because um, the thing about poetry is the more you read it and the more you understand it, the, or the more you read it, the more you understand it. So what I would like you guys to do for the Robert Frost poems, not the fog poem, but the Robert Frost poems, is to read them three times, okay? Read each one three times. So the first time you read it, so say you log in and you go to Nothing Gold Can Stay, because that's the first one you're reading. I want you to read through Nothing Gold Can Stay all the way through, okay? And don't stop. You just read it straight through. Don't stop. Don't click on any of the annotations. Don't even look at the annotations. You just read through that whole thing once, straight through. Don't stop, okay? And say it out loud, too. That'll probably help you read it out loud. Get that meter. Get that rhythm in there. Um, but that's the first one is just read it straight through. The second one is as you read the second time through, then you can click on the annotations and make your own notes or do whatever you want to. You can respond to the annotations. Um, you can make your own annotations. It's completely up to you how you want to do that. Um, but you do that on the second read through. On the third read through, you just repeat the first one and just read it all the way straight through again. So if you guys can do that for me, for the first one, you read it straight through. The second one, you read and you stop and click on everything and read through the additional stuff, make your own notes. And the third one, you repeat step one and just read it all the way straight through again. I promise that you will understand the poems better. Um, you'll come to probably appreciate them more and you'll probably be able to write a better response on them as well. So that's what I want from you guys is following that free read structure um, with these particular poems. So I'll leave you with that. Um, so just make sure you get those done today. I'm excited to see what you guys have to think about stuff. And there's a rather interesting question at the end of Fire and Ice that asks you to consider an illustrated version of the poem or an illustrated depiction of the poem and then respond to it. And so I'm really excited about that and happy to see what you guys come up with. And I hope you guys enjoy um, completing these assignments uh, for today.